so last time when I wrote L to lobby, it started immediately. And this time when I wrote it, he started immediately. So maybe when you hit L, it actually gives you the option to start the match. I don't know. I have no idea. Either way, looks like we're fine now, and they can start to actually assemble their heroes that they're going to be using. We have not seen any of these players yet, so we'll go ahead and introduce them on the blue team. That's going to be special kids. It's Grubs, Peels, Blanket, Papa, or Popa Chimo, Sore, and Roberto versus MXII. Hmm, I don't actually know what that is in Roman numerals. Um, M12? M12. Is it? M is... And oh, 50, 50, 50, 62, 62? <laughs> I, I want to say. All right. I could be horribly mistaken on that one. Don't quote me. <laughs> well, we'll find out. I'm sure we'll get corrected in the chat. Uh, Quincy, Bratak, <laughs> Cosmic Panda, Rishu, and Dragon JTS rounding out the attacking team that, again, is well, practice It's 1,012. Round. Oh, it's 1,000. 1,012. Okay. That's what I thought. Interesting. 50 is a, a C, I think. <laughs> I could be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Don't quote us on this. We're not good at this. No, yeah. C is C is a hundred for 100. like is a centurion kind of yeah. thing, you know. Well, I think is fifty is L. L. Super there, Bowl. Yeah, I'm just Super going Bowl. to this. My yes. my head just goes immediately to the Super Bowl. That's exactly right. Yep. So in twelve seconds, finally the doors will be open. We get a chance to see this defense setting up now. Grubs is going to be on the Torbjorn, which is a bit unusual, let's say, but. Um, perhaps if he can survive long enough to start dishing out armor onto his teammates, it'll pay off. And on the attacking side, let's see if there's anything oddball. Looks okay. Again, you've got a Pharaoh with no mercy, which I find kind of, kind of interesting. No Ana in play on either side. Um, but we do have a mercy on the side of the defense for those reses if necessary. Otherwise, um, Zenyatta is in tow on both sides. We're going to be seeing some aggression early here from Quincy, and uh, he might actually be caught out, completely exposed and isolated here. Diva going to be body blocking off that health pack as well. Really smart stuff here from Peels on the Diva. I mean, really good job to deny that health pack from him. Well, so far so good for the defense. The cart is stopped up right in the uh, archway that you tend to see it stopped at very often. Reinhardt's doing a good job of basically keeping the cart from moving any further, and Soldier 76 right behind him able to just blast down those sight lines. Now the cart has progressed enough where they can actually get a good view of the right side stairs where Winston is jumping in now. Cosmic Panda is going to get lit up, though as Soldiers and Yada and Mercy all jump on him. Now Farah jumping into the action a little bit late there uh, does get taken down as well. So attack will lead to regroup here and try not to lose any more players in the time being. We're seeing actually the tanks here on the attacking team just being very aggressive. Quincy before got isolated out solo. And then this time around, we actually saw Cosmic Panda going in, getting isolated and killed off solo himself. So. We'll see if maybe they can actually go in together here, get some semblance of some uh, team-wide execution and, and not get isolated by these DPS and, and really kind of peels here on the D.Va as well. Well, Farah Rishu found a good target to shoot at, but unfortunately Splash damaged himself down to about 18 HP and to get out of there uh, before finishing off the Mercy. Roberto does have a res available on the defense as well. Uh, but either way, we've now got Transcendence being triggered here by MX11 over on the defense, or excuse me, the attacking team, trying to force them through the point here. Soar on the defense is going to answer now, but uh, at this point, it looks like the bulk of the kills are still ending up in favor of the defense as the cart still has not moved. The supports are a little bit scared to push past the cart itself as Lucio and Zen are kind of the last couple of survivors. Popachimo and Blanket finding a couple of kills there. They're going to chase everyone back to spawn. Grubs getting in on the action as Torbjorn as well. And suddenly there's only 90 seconds or so for the attacking team to try and get through this first stretch. Uh, if any of you guys are wondering what's going on uh, with the match reports and stuff like that, just to see match scores, if you guys are wondering what's reported, what's not, make sure you guys check out uh, the website and then go to the actual groups where the page, uh, where all the groups are listed and everything like that. You have to actually click on the groups to see the individual scores. So if you guys are wondering what's going on with that, make sure that you uh, follow those specific directions. Make sure that you can get those uh, reported scores that have happened already here. But up top, blanket on this uh, soldier with a nice little flanking spot up here on the high ground and already the barrage coming down as Rishu gets denied by grubs. 
Well, at this point, defense still just holding strong at the choke point. Reinhardt's getting in on the action. Now he's got a charge pin kill onto Bratak. Still has the Earth Shatter ready to go, but peels his teammate, takes out the enemy Diva and Lucio with a suit explosion. So everyone on the defense getting in on the action here. 40 seconds left for the attackers to try to stop the bleeding here and make use of that Primal Rage and Tac Visor just so they can try to bust through this first choke point. Heels again, getting aggressive, denying a lot of that pressure, mitigating it with the defense matrix. And look at all these ults stacked up here. Sor Roberto ready to go. Transcendence at the ready with that backup of the resurrect. And these tanks are getting aggressive once again here on the attacking side. Cosmic Panda looking for the kill on the Mercy, but he's going to get protected by the Transcendence. And the Transcendence was really good timing there. Coming in right as Mercy was getting low on health. There's the attacker's Transcendence as well now. Bratak gets a couple of kills with the Helix Rocket, and the res only brings up Reinhardt, so um, perhaps committed a bit early, I'm not sure. Bratak gets a kill there with his Tactical Visor, but Blanket answers right back with a kill of his own on the enemy Diva. Sound Barrier might be the last chance here for the attacking team to get this cart moving again, but Popachimo is back in action with the axe swinging and the cart is going to be stuck right there next to the fountain in the first stretch so really good stuff there for special kids on the defense with that first point hold makes their work look pretty easy but sometimes both teams are just bad at attacking we have really no idea what we're going to see uh, once we switch sides here they had a lot of difficulty actually dealing with Grubs on that Torbjorn. It was really tough for them to actually get him when he was kind of insulated up in that back corner in that hallway with the window. And, you know, just had that turret down. The pressure there from Rishu just wasn't enough to actually take the turret down. So he was able to, you know, regardless of his ult, regardless of that Molten Core being up or not, you know, he was able to dish out a ton of damage with that turret, really putting out some pressure with that left click as well kind of shut down Cosmic Panda a few times when he got aggressive outside of his barrier where he was just throwing his left clicks into him and taking him down pretty quickly. I mean, he didn't convert as many kills as you probably would have liked to have seen from someone in that position who wasn't really getting checked all that much. But the pressure al alone was kind of what allowed Popachimo to dish out all that pressure that he was able to get out there on the Reinhardt and find those kills at the end and take it out of overtime and allow them to get that first point defense. Yeah, it's interesting that Roberto decided to res only Popachimo and it did end up making a big difference when he came back in, just being pocketed and, you know, being that wrecking ball that he is on the cart itself was able to get the job done. But now uh, only 30 seconds to go until we get to see what the next squad special kids can actually do on attack. Practice round will be on the defense this time, looking across their composition, not seeing any surprises based on what we saw last round. Uh, Grubs was on the Torbjorn, now attacking with the Pharah is going to be pretty much the biggest difference here. And another one of those instances where we're going to be seeing a Pharah with that Mercy up against a Pharah without one here, Rishu, not going to have that uh, backup as well with the support coming out from the Mercy, both damage and healing in the sky. So certainly some air superiority given over to uh, Grubs here in this matchup, but maybe we'll see uh, some great damage landed, but already a lot of pressure coming out here from Grubs. Well, Rishu jumps right at the enemy uh, Mercy and is, is trying to take her down, but uh, unfortunately misses a lot of those rockets. Now moving in from behind the payload itself to try and land some free rockets onto the supports. Does get a little bit of damage dished out, but does decide to leave them down there as well. I think uh, the defense would really be well suited to push back toward that fountain at this point as the cart is nicely situated in that choke point. Rishu gets a nice air kill there onto the enemy Farah. Grubs now gets a punch kill onto Roberto the Mercy as well, but you got to keep that cart in mind as uh, it is starting to move and it's getting very, very close to that point that was set on the previous round. It's actually still moving unopposed. Someone on the defense needs to get there. Rishu is the only option at this point, though, as that Farah oh, and it. not standing on the cart. Dragon GTS isn't there either as the Lucio, and the cart just rolls right past them. Game one's over just like that, and uh, the oh, special yes. kids take it 1-0 so far. I mean, Rishu, uh, they were able to, you know, he was able to find a couple of kills, found one onto the Mercy, was dishing out a ton of damage, found a kill onto his main threat of Blanket on the McCree as well. I mean, they had a lot of kills going there. I mean, they just weren't able to unseat Peels on the D.Va on that point. And, you know, he, he just wasn't on the point, obviously. The rest of the team wasn't there in time, so... Well, Popachino did get play of the game honors. This was before that, you know, res at the very end. Uh, actually just getting the job done here with his axe. Nice fire strike there, point blank onto the Zenyatta as well. But that was 
pretty much a quick and dirty little Dorado. Blanket getting <laughs> the most damage there with only 7Q now. Hollywood, again, we've already got special kids up 1-0 to zero in this series. And uh, they're looking to make it a quick 2-0, I think, here on Hollywood. You can see the defenders practice round uh, locking in some early heroes here. It looks like they want to stick with Zenyatta Lucio, Rishu on the Farah, Cosmic Panda I believe was playing the Winston, Ratak on Soldier, and Quincy on D.Va. We'll see if Cosmic wants to play a, a different tank this time around, but Winston still pretty darn good in most situations. Zarya did get a little bit of a buff on her ultimate, so have seen her come back a little bit this patch also. You still typically see, you know, what we call more of like a pillar tank or uh, there's some other words that are kind of tossed around and used as well. Just someone that, you know, like Reinhardt or Winston that can be a very frontline threat is very um, defensible. You know, obviously Winston with the barrier, that health reset, being able to get aggressive. I mean, you have those two modes. So you typically see one of those two involved. But here... Uh, we see both sides. I mean, Popachimo probably going to be swapping over to a Reinhardt or potentially a Winston as well. But on the defensive side, it's it's more more or less locked in here, is it not? I mean, Cosmic Panda not going to be bringing out a Winston or a Reinhardt. He's going to be on that Zarya, so they're not going to have one of those, and they're really going to be kind of uh, banking on just that aggression, that that kill threat, that lethality from Rishu and Bratak, and to some extent, actually, the Zenyatta as well. Yep, Zen will definitely have to be painting the targets and communicating well who needs to die. Uh, Popachimo on the Roadhog is kind of interesting. I actually haven't uh, been casting too many Overwatch tournaments lately, but Roadhog kind of fell off the face of the earth once they changed his kit quite a bit. And, um, you know, I guess it's still a comfort pick. If you can hit those hooks, he's still pretty devastating. But as far as tanks doing tank things, he's just kind of fallen out of favor as kind of... Um, a DPS variant, but we'll see if they end up switching him to a barrier of some kind as the game continues on. He's going to be very quickly actually look for a hook. Does not find Soldier 76, but uh, the attackers are going to back off for the time being. They also have Blanket on the offensive Widowmaker, so definitely going to have to give Blanket a, a look here to start the game off. Oh, very close on that hook as well. We already see Grubs being taken out here. They're getting slowed down a bit as Popachimo right now looking for that opening hook needs to find it here I mean this diva can kind of mitigate some of that pressure from that Roadhog and if he gets a hook could also just mitigate that one shot threat as well oh blanket is hitting the snipes he actually killed Zenyatta and Farah so far uh, the rest of the kills have been very slow and steady in between actually no no other kills even happening but that's because they're all hiding from the Widowmaker so another nice shot there onto Quincy already d -mech. Gets taken out, and another one on Dragon GTS. Blanket is the secret weapon here, landing tons of these Widowmaker shots. I picked a good time to watch there, uh, nailing that Lucio, but that's going to be point A pretty much wrapped up in about a minute and a half. They were slow and steady to get their foot in the door, but, um, you know, once they got in there, they just kind of wedged it open, and um, this is going to let them capture in about 90 seconds. The Widow actually allowed them to get a little bit more aggressive with their positioning too because they were having trouble getting past SUV up in the, the entryway of that point A. And the Widow just having that that potential for that quick kill, that quick pick, they were all kind of forced to go back over to the point, which allowed, of course, Popachimo, Peels, and, and, and the rest of them to just get very aggressive. And a Ooh. nice hook coming out onto Bratak. He's going to get taken out of the, the roof there. Yeah, unfortunate for Bratak, I was actually watching his POV because he had the tactical visor ready to go. And I was waiting to see if they might dump it into a Zarya Graviton search here, but now they're going to have to play kind of cautiously, missing that hitscan DPS, especially with Grubs flying around the way he is landing rockets. He's got a barrage ready to go himself. Looks like there's a little bit of flanking action happening here. Lucio eats a rocket, but does get shielded up by his teammate in time. There's just mass ultimates available on both sides. So Roberto, as long as he just stays hidden with that Mercy Res, uh, gives his team the better odds. Diva Suit Explosion going to be the first one out. Doesn't find anything. Quincy most likely just needed a new suit. So he's going to re-mech, head back to the cart. The cart is still moving, by the way, even though it's being pushed by only one person. Uh, the attackers are yes. gaining ground here. There's a barrage here from the defensive Farah. That's Rishu. He gets taken out during it, and the cart is still moving. Yeah, they have been continuously pushing this through the streets phase with not too much of a defense here coming out at all. We do still see that Graviton being held onto. I mean, they 
they have had a couple of opportunities, but just haven't been able to execute on any of them because they've just been taken out one by one by one. This is exactly what we saw in the last matchup, where they're just following, they're, they're, they're just following one by one here. They're finally going to make a defense, but it's not really going to come out too much because they already got that second point. Their spawn is so close. I will say Cosmic Panda's been pretty quick on the draw with his Zarya bubbles, like protecting teammates, but uh, the Graviton Surge, yeah, again, he just has not found a good moment to use it. And uh, Bratak in the back as a Soldier 76 almost finds a kill on Widowmaker before Mercy shows up, but doesn't survive long. Popachimo with a Roadhog hook takes out the enemy healer as well. MX11 going to be taken down there. Or MXII, however we're choosing to say his name. Soar on the other side, the attacking Zenyatta does have Transcendence ready to go. They still have that res, they still have a barrage. Cosmic Panda has basically their biggest threat on defense with that Graviton Surge. You might as well just hit it. As soon as D.Va leaves, just hit something. Get some value for that so you can start building up another one. They're already going to be losing Bratak there, who was positioned pretty aggressively. And now Grubbs just surveying a little bit, making himself useful up in this back line. Going to have that barrage ready to go, and nobody's going to see him at all. He's going to be able to unload into this Mercy if he wants to. Yeah, he doesn't even need to. Devo's still close by, so he uh, does the right thing and waits a little bit longer. Cosmic Panda and Rishu go down on the other team. The defense is already straggling back to the point here. So as the Diva suit gets taken down, he's going to pop out of there, try and get himself a new one. Nice direct rockets from Grubbs. Uh, does eventually help get a kill there onto MXII on the defense, but uh, as it appears, the cart is still moving. Grubbs is going to get forced back slowly but surely. There's the res from Roberto only picking up D.Va. Uh, Dragon JTS on the other side has picking up, picked up Fer excuse me, picked up Mercy as well, but does not have a res ready to go before getting taken down. And this is still just a kind of a slow piecemeal attack. Defense finally have regained control of the cart though. And we see the Lucio under fire a little bit too. If they can find that kill, Grubbs just looking for it. Nice self-destruct just to <laughs> kind of control that little objective point there. And Barrage right now about to go down. I mean, Grubbs has just been holding on to this for so long, but he finally un- Hey! Wow, he kills both supports there and gets the Diva suit uh, eliminated or at least destroyed so that they can continue to roll onto that VIP parking spot. Two minutes and 34 seconds left by the end of it. And honestly, they just needed to coordinate a little bit, get that barrage off, and that's really all it took. Again, the defense, it just seemed like the single file curse uh, acting up against them again and their strength and numbers. You just got to go with a buddy and, you know, try to take it, those fights where you can. You don't necessarily need to stream all the way back to the objective by yourself. So we'll see if they're able to kind of regroup and figure out what they need to do here on the attack. But a uh, really good time set here for special kids already as they will be on the defense this time. I'm not sure if I believe in a first point hold here. I mean, it, it's certainly possible, but on the defense, we're going to maybe see Blanket playing that Widowmaker. And again, we know how inconsistent that can sometimes be. I mean, if he's hitting his shots, then yeah, they're absolutely going to shut down Rishu, who's only been on the Fera as far as I can, as far as I can tell. I mean, I haven't seen him. We, we haven't seen him on anything else, have we? Uh, Rishu think, or who? Yeah, I don't no, Rishu. Just, yeah, I don't, yeah, just I don't think we have seen him. So, I mean, if he actually is hitting his shots, this Widowmaker is going to be able to shut down Rishu pretty hard. And if he doesn't make any swaps, then, you know, that's kind of starting them off as like, a little bit of a 6v5 to allow them to have that you know that that slight advantage but again that inconsistency if he's if he's not hitting those shots then it's kind of opening up Rishu to get aggressive he was able to find kills on Dorado to uh, start them off on the defensive side and he's been able to find some kills here as well it's just can he find enough to get them that point can he be enough of a threat alongside Bratak who was struggling on defense to be able to unlock this first objective and start working their way through the streets phase. Well, I'm noticing the defense are playing very low on tanks. They were using Torbjorn and May and Widowmaker as kind of like a utility defense rather than straight up HP and barriers. So uh, Reinhardt, I have to imagine, will be playing kind of with the Widowmaker or with the Torbjorn. Doesn't look like it actually though. Torb is just setting up pretty far forward. I don't know. I don't know what we're going to see. Doors are open now. Uh, attackers are unleashed and they have a Zenyatta and a Lucio to work with here. I'm going to watch Rishu to get us started here as that Farah can just kind of hop over obstacles and pick the uh, the best attack routes. There's already a D.Va actually. Quincy all the way up on top of the cafe forces them out of that position, uh, but they seem to be fine with that as they just head toward the back platform. Quincy 
getting pretty low here. Oh, they actually do wind up taking him out of mech. Peels goes down, but they still have an opportunity here to make this defense work. And they are actually blanket under duress a little bit here. Going to be able to get some healing from the Mercy. And it looks like they are going to make this hold, but still have to deal with Cosmic Panda on the point. Yeah, again, it's, it just does not feel very cohesive. They're not really going together. Blanket literally just wall peaks the Zenyatta and takes him down. Uh, no problem at all. Now turns his attention to Rishu, who's extremely low on health already. After a couple of shots from that Widowmaker, Rishu goes down inside the cafe, and there's three minutes left on the clock. So the attacking team will need to group up once Rishu respawns, figure out is this actually the composition they want to continue forward with, start to build up those ultimates a bit. Bratzak already taking some damage from Blanket and that hook shot. So uh, Blanket definitely knows what he's doing. He's got the silver border as well. So we are talking about just played time experience uh, being a big benefit. A tournament like this blanket has played you know thousands of games clearly <laughs> yeah he's definitely played a lot and he's gonna have that uh infrasight coming up pretty soon here it actually does pop it pretty early just to get a little bit more information cosmic panda trying to get aggressive trying to get a little bit of damage into him early but not gonna find anything as of yet and that's gonna be grubs popping that molten core if they find a kill onto the diva there again just wiping the floor with these guys yeah, Grubs gets kills on D.Va and Winston, so no tanks to speak of here for the attacking team. Again, forced back. They've got two minutes to work with. Bratak trying his best to survive, actually does get taken out late by May, of all people. So they will need to back up again as uh, Bratak respawns there. They are starting to get some ultimates coming online, but Rishu now bites the dust off on his own. Just a little bit too exposed there. And again, they need to regroup. There's no point in attacking in 5v6 if you couldn't get it done 6v6, and you don't have any ultimates to work with. So now 130 remaining. Definitely going to have to rely on Ratak and Rishu here if they can. Dragon coming up pretty soon with a sound barrier that they're definitely going to need to try to combat Soar there with the Transcendence. R Roberto actually sitting on a re Resurrect as well. I mean, it's going to be pretty tough for them to try to get in here. They're going to have to get some early picks and try to put some pressure down onto this Mercy to take him out of the equation so that they don't have to worry about that threat of that Resurrect. Well, they took out Torbjorn's turret really quickly. He's starting to build up another one now, but that's like at least a small window that they could have used. However, MXII does go down to Widow again. Headshot uh, says the kill feed there, and suddenly the attackers are dropping like flies. Uh, Peels is going to get brought up on the defense playing that Reinhardt, and he's actually just sitting on an Earth Shatter as well if things do get out of hand. There's a Winston Primal Raging, but he's frozen and has an Orb of Discord, and he's going to get pinned out of there. So that was not a great day to be a Winston. 36 seconds left, and the defense do use their Transcendence, so uh, they only have the Blizzard and Earth Shatter to work with, but I have a feeling that's going to be enough. They've been playing with less than that throughout the course of this defense and holding pretty well. Blanket again finds a headshot kill, this time onto Bratak the Soldier. Ah, oh, man. Rishu found a couple of kills, but with the Barrage going down, now they have to. They basically have to go in on this because he found those two kills, wound up dying right after. May going to be shutting down the aggression from that Winston. Oh, man, the Zenyatta comes down. They need to apply pressure onto Blanket, and a nice Earthshatter coming out. Going to be able to do take out Dragon and Bratek in the process, and basically just causing panel the point hit again. Yep, pretty simple case of Blanket finding a headshot kill and Reinhardt dealing with everything that's still on the ground. Cosmic Panda's near the point, but unable to contest. He was super low on health anyway, so even if he had gotten down there, that probably would have been uh, over pretty quickly, but that is going to be it. Special Kids take the map Hollywood and the series. That's a 2-0 for them. Uh, congratulations to them. Special kids moving on in their group, or at least improving their record in their group. This was their first match of the day, so uh, here we see Grubs as Farah getting play of the game. I believe he got a double barrage somewhere. Yeah, toward the very end. <laughs> this is the one he was holding on to for so long and was able to uh, basically just kind of wait it out, wait for that perfect opportunity to allow himself in that really kind of perfect spot as well. Didn't really get denied at all by the D.Va that was in the area. Uh, Quincy wasn't able to mitigate any of the any of those rockets coming out of it, the chest of that Ferris. So he was able to kind of wipe the floor with the opposition and, and get that objective just shortly after. All right, well, nobody's eliminated here or anything like that, at least. So the practice round can kind of uh, maybe watch this VOD or figure out if they have some other strategies that going to be seeing some more excellent group stage matches. So, uh, Herix, anything you want to say before we uh, give our final sponsor shout-outs and all that and take off for the day? 
Yeah, I mean, we saw some great, great stuff from uh, two teams especially. I mean, both of the matches, we got the ability to kind of glean a little bit uh, of what's to expect, I guess, from groups three and four, desktop support, and uh, I believe it was, what, Special Kids, I think, is the team that we just saw win. Um uh, do really, really well in their first opening matchups. I'm definitely excited to see what the future holds for these guys. And, um, you know, I, I feel like desktop support is a team that we'll be seeing later down the line in the championships uh, bracket as well. But as for groups, which is going to continue, of course, tomorrow, uh, we'll be able to see some more teams, see who, uh, kind of what to expect for the champions uh, bracket, more so than what we we're able to glean from from today. And uh, I'm looking forward to it, man, because today was fun. I've definitely been enjoying the tournament and uh, looking forward to more. Yeah, we have a lot more matches coming tomorrow and Sunday. Again, that's noon Eastern time, 9 a.m. Pacific. If you're like me all the way out here in the West, uh, we've got some nice morning overwatch for you guys. Same channel here, uh, twitch.tv slash CEA. But uh, again, just to close out the show, this is the second Canex Championship Gaming Series here. we got the military, uh, Canadian Armed Forces battling it out against each other for some fun prizes and stuff. We've got uh, basically $400 worth of prizes for the first place team. Everyone on the first place team will get an MSI GT Dragon Summer Bundle, a headset, a gaming mouse, and a mechanical keyboard. The second place team will get that same Summer Bundle and mouse, uh, but will not get the headset or keyboard, so definitely coveted first prize there. Uh, again, the sponsors for the event are MSI, Asus, Acer, NVIDIA, and Cougar. You can check out canx.ca to find all of those products on their website. They've got a computer sale going on now until August 27th, and you can get exclusive discount, uh, excuse me, exclusive discounts with your CF1 card. So make sure you've got that ready to go as well as you check out some of those awesome sales. They've got a bunch of laptops and uh, gaming equipment um, with some markdown prices. So go check out canx.ca. They sponsored some giveaways for us as well on Facebook. Don't forget, uh, if you are just watching or uh, if you've already been eliminated from play, perhaps you can win some of those Facebook prizes. Uh, we'll be doing those for the first couple of games on the stream tomorrow. So again, noon Eastern, make sure you're here for those Facebook giveaways. A CF1 card is required. Um, but that basically wraps up the show for today. We're going to just leave you guys with another set of commercials and then some uh, some bye-bye music. But that'll wrap things up. Thank you so much to everyone who participated in today's games and the viewers for coming to support their friends and family. We'll be back again noon Eastern on Saturday.